Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome to today's TP Talks. I'm honored today to host Jeffrey Burbridge from USAA on today's TP Talks. Jeffrey will be sharing his insight on USAA's approach to serving millennials, both members and the workforce. I'm your moderator, Amit Shankaras, Executive Vice President for Global Market Engagement at Teleperformance, and will facilitate this conversation with Jeff. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. There are several related resources available for you to view and download in the resources widget on the right of your screen. Please do that at any time during this webinar. We've also received several questions during the registration process. Thank you for submitting them. But if you have any questions as we go through the webinar, please use the Q&A window on your screen. It's a little widget. You can do this anytime during the conversation, and we'll address these questions as we go through the webinar. If you'd like to reach out to us, use the little email widget. If you have any questions, use the question mark icon. A little bit about TP Talks. What is TP Talks? TP Talks is designed to deliver insights into best practices, big trends, innovations, and real-world success stories in 30-minute bite-sized packages. Teleperformance has worked diligently with our clients to curate this content for you. Apart from this webinar, there's several others available on demand. I'll let you know how you can access them in a few minutes. A little bit about your host today. Teleperformance has been serving industry-leading brands for almost four decades. With a focus on making each interaction matter, for our clients in 160 markets around the world, we support many well-known brands through a variety of channels of interaction, whether it's uh, customer care, whether it's technical support, customer acquisition, digital solutions, analytics, or specialized services like back office, RPA, automation. That's what we do. We help our clients ensure that each interaction of base matters. We are particularly proud of the awards we win and the recognition we get from analysts in various leadership quadrants that they publish, recognition from our clients. But in context of today's conversation, we are particularly proud of the accolades that we receive from initiatives related to being a military-friendly employer in the U.S. And it is with this in mind that I'm particularly particularly pleased to introduce our guest speaker for today, Jeffrey Burbridge with USAA. Jeffrey leads USAA's bank contact center operations. This team is responsible for providing USAA members a world-class sales and service experience for credit card, deposit, and consumer lending. Jeff joined USAA in early 2015 and has served as the VP for third-party contact centers prior to that. Prior to joining USAA, Jeffrey spent several years, uh, I believe about 21 years, at Bank of America. And interestingly, apart from being, by the way, a Six Sigma black belt, he's also an inspirational leader and has some really great insight that he's going to share with us. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Amit. I appreciate the invite. I'm uh, very pleased to be joining you today uh, from a teleperformance site in Louisville, Kentucky, where our partners are very busy uh, serving USAA members. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Burbridge, and I uh, work for uh, USAA, serving our members uh, for the past three years. I've been a proud USAA member for uh, almost 27 years now. My father was a uh, Army officer, which is how I was able to uh, join USAA growing up. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about millennials and both millennials in the marketplace and millennials in the workplace. And I thought uh, we, we talked about this topic after I read a very interesting article that was talking about millennials in the workplace. And it was talking about how they're different than all of the generations that preceded them. Now, I think we all want to believe that our generation is somehow different or somehow special, but this particular generation is so substantially different that it's causing disruption 
both in the marketplace and in the workplace as uh, groups try to understand how to best interact with them. Uh, one really interesting statistic that I did myself did not realize when uh, we started talking about this was the fact that millennials are a third of the workplace today, but in uh, a few short years they're going to represent 46% of the workforce. That is a huge percentage of um, workers that are out there, and we need to adapt. There's also a really uh, strong disconnect between what millennials say that they value as compared to what their managers value. And when we combine that fact with the number one reason why somebody attrites from a company is their manager, uh, that becomes a pretty explosive um, combination. So what was it that millennials say that they are um, particularly interested in? And I think there's two items that I would leave you with. That is uh, mission orientation and flexibility. I'll start with um, flexibility because I think it's um, a really important topic. Uh, when we talk about flexibility, uh, millennials have grown up in a digital world. They have grown, uh, they are the children of technology. Uh, for the past 11 years, they've um, lived and grown with smartphones. They've had iPads in their hands for uh, a large portion, portion of their adult and uh, teenage life. Uh, they are uh, very tech savvy. And what they also see is they see the gig economy as being a really um, critical component of how they consume services. And so as a consumer, they're very likely to switch and they don't give their brand loyalty uh, very quickly. Uh, they're very, especially in financial services, banking in particular, they're 30% uh, more likely to switch banks than the generations that preceded them. They don't uh, perceive uh, brand loyalty the same way that other generations have. Um, if they look at um, pay and we look at benefits, there are things that they value at differently than um, preceding generations. They were half as likely to place an emphasis on high pay uh, versus flexibility and flexibility to work when they want to as compared to uh, when uh, traditional work hours were out there. We talked about bosses and we talked about um, the gig economy. I want to talk a little bit about diversity though because diversity and an inclusive workforce is another item that was listed as critical to this generation. Millennials are the most diverse generation of um, both consumers and workers that has ever existed. Uh, 40% of the millennial workforce population is non-white, and they look at companies to be leaders in diversity and inclusion. And if they perceive that um, the company that they work for is uh, not reflecting their value of diversity, then they're less likely to uh, want to engage, and they're more likely to attract. Um, we talked a little bit about social media uh, and how it is so critical for a company not just to engage with a millennial via a social platform. It can't be as simple as pushed content. They're really looking to see uh, their peers or their influencers to drive that content. How is the brand being driven organically? versus uh, being uh, driven episodically uh, by marketers. And so um, these are things that just seem to come up time and time again. But I'll, I'll, I'll switch from flexibility and some of the workplace items into mission orientation because this is very clearly uh, something that they say is very important to them. They're looking for a social purpose. They're looking for work that is meaningful. Uh, and they're looking to make a difference in the world uh, that they uh, live in. And um, so having a company that uh, purports some uh, purpose 
and uh, serve either a higher uh, a, a higher uh, purpose or some sort of common purpose that they perceive as being important is very critical. Amit? Yeah, you know, Jeff, it's interesting, your last comment, because for 96 years, USAA has been driven by the same purpose. And I know this is, this is core to who USAA is and, um, and, and how you recruit, how you train, how you employ people, how you, your outreach, everything is, seems to be driven by this. Paint a little color for us, uh, paint a little picture for us, if you will, on what that sense of purpose means to you and, and how it manifests itself at USAA. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you mentioned our 96th uh, anniversary. We just celebrated uh, in June our 96th birthday. And I think um, if you know anything about USAA, uh, our, our story of existence is very compelling. We were founded by 25 Army officers in San Antonio, Texas, who were having a hard time finding insurance. Uh, it was believed at the time that they represented a higher risk pool. And so what they did was they put their money together and they actually self-insured. They formed a mutual association uh, in order to insure each other. And then they went out and over the years they, they, that, that association has grown. And so uh, we've seen our mission um, evolve over the years to what you see on the screen today. The mission of the association is to facilitate the financial security of its members, associates, and their families through provision of a full range of highly competitive financial products and services. In doing so, USAA seeks to be the provider of choice for the military community. I think this is something that um, when we talk about millennials in the workforce and we talk about uh, having a compelling mission, one of the things I read an article, it's actually a very recent, just um, published in the um, Harvard Business Review uh, Journal, uh, the date July, August of 2018. And there's an article that actually talks a little bit about uh, having a purpose-driven organization and it actually references USAA and USAA's contact centers. One of the things that they talk about is turning an authentic message into a constant message. So one of the interesting things of USAA's culture, and I heard this when I interviewed there, but I've seen this time and time again, every meeting is begun with the mission. Uh, we start talking about the mission. Um, we uh, we talk about the mission statement. We talk about very specific things that we've done, whether it's a moment that mattered or whether it's a, um, a nonprofit that we supported, whether it's an interaction with a member that they had or perhaps an interaction uh, they had themselves. Every meeting culturally at USAA begins with the mission. And uh, since I happen to be at a teleperformance site today, uh, every meeting that we have, even at our partners, begins with the mission. And it's really just a, a core component of who we are. And what the article really talks about is, as authentic as your mes message is, if it's not constant, if it's not intertwined into your corporate culture, uh, it will not be being, it will not be perceived as being truly authentic. And I think when we talk about millennials in the workplace, they're really looking for that authenticity. Uh, they're looking for that purpose, uh, and they want to feel like they're making a difference. And when I, I speak about the 13 million or so USAA members out there, uh, many of whom who have served our country, and they've served uh, with honor uh, in any of the armed forces, uh, that makes me very proud, especially coming from a military family myself. And it makes me um, want to work harder. It makes me feel like I want to do more for uh, those members. So it's a very integ integral part of our culture. It's who we are. Uh, and it's not just a uh, talk, it's a walk. And so that's, um, 
uh, like I said, a really key uh, part of our culture that millennials really gravitate towards. Jeff, you know, talking about uh, the workforce and uh, the fact that millennials will represent 46% of the workforce coming up in, in the next few years. You know, when you think about millennials, most the oldest are in their late 30s, the youngest are in their early 20s. They probably have a different sense of um, what they are looking for in a workplace. So from USAA's perspective, what have you done to adapt both on the front end of recruiting and on the retention end? What have you folks done to accommodate for uh, the for, for a millennial workforce? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, first of all, hire in profile. We hire to culture at, um, at USAA. I was actually doing some information sharing with uh, another company, and we were talking a little bit about some of the questions that are asked uh, within their um, surveys of uh, employee satisfaction. And they asked a question around, uh, is, is this a job, is this a profession, or is this a calling? And, uh, you know, that, that really kind of blew my mind uh, because when I think about you know, the people that we interview and the people that are most successful at USAA, uh, millennials or otherwise, uh, we really do look for folks that have that military affinity, and we find that that's one of the um, single greatest predictors of success. It just so happens that that aligns neatly with what millennials value. And when we're able to combine that with a fun and flexible work environment, so um, if you've ever been to USAA's campus, it's a, it's a, city, um, it's a city unto itself. Uh, there's a lot of facilities that are available to uh, workers, whether it's fun uh, facilities, uh, gym facilities, uh, it, we, we really engage people on how to become healthier and live a healthy lifestyle, which is important to millennials. Uh, but flexibility is uh, something, and this is something that we're really talking quite a bit about. You know, how do we create um, a flexible environment that still uh, serves our members? And um, one of the things that's not widely known is the fact that we have a very large uh, work at home contingent. And so we have a number of people that are able to serve members while working from home. And if you think about, uh, say, a military spouse who perhaps is um, PCSing, changing station uh, from one location to another, the ability to take their job with them and to take their flexible job with them in a meaningful way uh, can mean a great deal to them. And as they see that, that again contributes to the mission. Some of the things I think that are emerging trends are um, we talk about the gig economy and uh, perhaps the uberization of um, the workforce. You know, how do you uh, how do you uh, not just uh, compel people to come in based on mission, but you're able to uh, create a financial reward for them uh, that is uh, compelling as well uh, based on your actual needs? So we think search pricing in um, the Uber model. Well, there's a lot of ways to um, do that. And I think many companies are still figuring that out, and if I'm being transparent, I don't know that even we've figured that out yet, but um, definitely something that we're looking at. When we talk about perks and benefits, so um, what's interesting is that this is a generation that has lived with a level of instability that is greater than many others as well. As we went into the Great Recession, a lot of things that um, people perceived as promises, you know, if I go to college, I'll get a great job, I'll be able to move out, I'll buy my home. These are not necessarily things that this generation has valued because they've seen how um, that value can be diminished by forces that are outside of their control. And so the irony is that some traditional benefits like uh, great health insurance, um, 401ks, uh, matches, things like that, some of those are items that millennials actually value more, but there's also non-traditional benefits that um, are out there, uh, like uh, subsidized cafeterias, um, health clubs, 
um, being able to participate in um, those mission-oriented events that also become really uh, important to them. And so it's truly a balance uh, out there uh, for, for the millennials. Thanks, Jeff. And we've got a couple of questions about specifically around perks and benefits, so I appreciate your you're addressing that too. Let's switch gears slightly and talk about the other side of the equation, and this is around um, you're serving millennial customers. And uh, maybe I'll start with a question that was submitted um, during the registration process. And the question is, what is the single biggest and most powerful thing that you have recognized about today's millennial consumer? Uh, when we talk about the consumer, I think the thing that really sticks with me is, is about brand loyalty and how, uh, I guess the word is low, it can be. They're very um, quick to switch. And, you know, one bad experience can become amplified via social media to a degree that is um, greater than um, previous. Uh, I joined USAA because my father told me I would join USAA. Um, the word of mouth was very strong by the uh, military police officer, major father in my household. Okay? Great. That's one word of mouth. In 1987, that was how things got amplified. Um, in, you know, 2018, uh, you, you'll see items go viral uh, on the web uh, because something went wrong in a supply chain. Something went wrong in a, uh, a, a customer experience, whatever it happened to be. Um, and it can, it can get so amplified to the point that it becomes deafening. And uh, it's that type of uh, item, whether it's uh, amplified via social media or um, other mechanisms, YouTube, et cetera, that uh, it, it becomes really, really critical in millennials deciding, I'm going to do business with you. Many, in many cases, um, switching from your brand is as simple as downloading an app, and that's how they switch. And so if we consider um, you know, social media, one of the things I love about USAA is that we have a lot of brand advocates. And um, I don't have to necessarily uh, uh, share our story. I can walk around with a USAA shirt on, and I guarantee you I will have members that will walk up to me. And I have been a member for 40, 50 years, and they'll tell me about it. And when millennials hear that, um, that uh, conveys that sense of uh, genuineness to them that I think is uh, so important. Yeah, and you know what's interesting, Jeff, uh, as we were preparing for this conversation, we looked at some of the Facebook posts that uh, USAA enjoys, and there's so many of these, I think you refer to them as meaningful moments that your your members will talk about um, experiences they've had with, uh, with the organization, and it's clearly um, two points. It's very pervasive in what you do, and B, you know, like you said earlier, millennials are not shy of sharing on social media too. Now, and I think um, one of the things that always strikes me is how do you become the story favorably um, without ever having told the story? You know, how do you create that moment that matters? Uh, you know, for your uh, for your members, for your customers, um, without you ever having broadcast it. That's where I think millennials really turn their heads and listen. Yeah, no, it's um, it is a different paradigm here. Um, so you you have your in-house centers, you use third-party providers, you have an ecosystem that goes not just in terms of customer care, but in terms of your products and services. You have an ecosystem that's ex that's really expansive beyond what you, so to speak, directly control. How do you build this culture? When you talk about the the mission-based culture, the mission-based, purpose-driven culture, how do you extend that across and beyond? the USAA ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And I think it's even relevant just to um, where I'm located today. So I happen to be um, with uh, my teleperformance partners in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, one of the things that we're very careful to do is we don't just hire our employees to culture, but we select our partners to culture. And we want to make sure that that people model that we drive 
is uh, permeates our um, our entire chain because if it breaks down anywhere, um, that can create that um, uh, I don't know moment that didn't matter uh, to a member, and that just uh, can't work. I think I talked a little bit about the mission and how it begins our meetings, but uh, taking it a couple steps further, um, we, some of our contact centers are staffed by third parties, and we have a number of different partners that are out there. Last week, uh, our partners hosted a series of volunteer events across the country in uh, 15 different locations focusing on the military communities where they serve. So here in Louisville, they partnered with uh, an agency uh, driving out what we would consider to be the mission uh, for, uh, for themselves. And so I think it's that level of engagement when you're able to transcend the four walls of your, your internal brand and bring it to your partners uh, that you really, really get um, a level of commitment that is beyond uh, what you would normally get from an employee. When we, as a result, we do see lower attrition and stronger results uh, across the board. And remember, this is largely a millennial workforce. You know, Jeff, uh, this question just came in, and it's kind of pertinent, given your point earlier about uh, diversity being a key value for millennials. The question is, how do you engage with your millennial customers who prefer to speak a language other than English? That's a, that's a great question. And, and for USAA, it's not something we actually deal with largely, given our population of military uh, uh, so service members and their families. They largely do speak English. And for the, uh, for the off chance that we encounter, say, a non-English speaking spouse, it's largely um, going to be Spanish language. And um, the fact that we're a San Antonio-based company uh, builds in a uh, Spanish language workforce. But uh, what I would say is just from previous roles is um, it, it is important for people to work in language. And um, whether you are um, serving a Spanish-speaking uh, uh, population in the U.S. or uh, candidly it could be uh, an international population or a domestic population in another com uh, country, um, it's important that you're able to engage in their language and speak not only the words but uh, convey the contextual meaning. And so um, you can do that through partners. You can do that um, through engaging uh, local uh, uh, agencies, understanding how your uh, company's mission translates becomes very important. Uh, so um, I think those are just some things I would throw out there. Great. Thanks for that insightful response, Jeff. I think we have time for a couple of other questions. Um, Here's one for you. How are you keeping millennials engaged six to 12 months after onboarding? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a, there's a couple items. So um, I think uh, first and foremost, we make sure that culturally they're engaged. You know, how are we making sure that we've breathed life into our mission with our new employees? Um, I, we, we have a couple different programs to help us do that. Uh, we have a Healthy Points program at USAA that encourages um, healthy behavior, but there's a lot of different engagement uh, uh, tools that are associated with that, um, whether it's de-stressing your environment, hydrating, uh, et cetera. We also have a number of diversity and inclusion groups that are quite common at larger companies, but making sure that they're engaged and, um, you know, we have speaker series and things like that that they are able to participate in, but also making sure that we're inclusive to the degree so that our non-San uh, Antonio workforce, um, whether it's in our regional campuses or our work at home, are able to participate as well. And then I think um, it comes down to relationship with manager, uh, career pathing, et cetera. How do you build out a career uh, for these individuals as they progress? Great. Thank you, Jeff. And I think we'll take one more question. We're just running out of time here, but here we go. 
would like to understand how you balance the needs of millennials and other demographics that are looking to be served in a more traditional way? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and in fact, it's something that a lot of companies do struggle with. And so if we think about USAA, um, we have a lot of history behind us that is geared towards uh, the uh, older generation. So whether it's – and I, I'm coughing a little bit when I say Gen X, Gen Y. Uh, I'm really struggling saying this is one of our older generations. Uh, but uh, baby boomers, et cetera. And so uh, the, we make sure that our facilities and um, the things that they value uh, still come to light while uh, creating these new flexible items that millennials value. Um, so I think it's, um, it's a combination of several things that um, really do matter. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeff, from hearing from you talk today, it is very clear how and why USAA has established the reputation that it has in the marketplace. Thank you for your guidance, your insights, your sharing. We very much appreciate it. For everybody on the call, an on-demand version of this webcast will be available in about a day's time. Feel free to download or share with your colleagues that haven't had a chance to look at this. Don't forget to download the resources that are available to you. And once again, Jeff, thank you so much for your insights, for your time today. Everybody else, have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Jeff.